Hello, so welcome to lecture 2 for Engineering 102 Dynamics uh, for winter 2016. Today we're going to continue from uh, what we saw last week with uh, vector algebra. Uh, we're going to continue looking at things like vector representation and uh, how to express vectors in uh, a certain set of unit vectors or in a certain or that which is also called a basis. And uh, so we'll start over there and we'll continue along those lines and see how far we can get. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. So last week, uh, at the end of the lecture, we saw how vector addition worked and how you can get a resultant from two vectors and we solve an example problem at the end of the lecture. Uh, today we're going to continue thinking along those lines with not that exact problem, but uh, understanding the uniqueness of representation of vectors. All right, so say you're given a vector v right this is your vector v and say that it can be represented just through two other vectors right which is v1 and v2 right and remember that uh, these are just a uh, little uh, tildes under my vectors to denote them and v1 1 and 2 are subscripts which uh, look, which just uh, name another set two vectors, which are v1 and v2. All right, so we know that v is equal to v1 plus v2. The question is, is this a unique representation? Uh, think about this for a little bit. Uh, you can pause the video and uh, yeah, so the question that I'm asking you over here, actually, before we pause the video again is, is this the only way we can reach a vector v or, com or uh, uh, compute the vector v? Is, are these the only two vectors? Is there any other way, any other organization of vectors that could result in that uh, same vector v? So think about this for a little bit uh, and uh, write, write down your answers or your theories and uh, then we can think about uh, whether this is true or not. All right, assuming that you paused the video for a little bit and thought about it, we can continue. So the answer to that question is that that is not the only way that you could represent the vector v. And let's just see another kind of representation we could make. We could use, say, four or five, maybe even six other vectors to make that representation. So let's say that there were another set of vectors, w's, let's call them w's, right? A set of vectors w could go like this. This is w1, w2. W3, W4, and W5, right? So clearly, vector V, right, uh, let's change the color. Don't remember that V is still in. Yeah, vector V is also equal to the vectors w1, w2, all the way up to w5, right? So you could add the vectors w5 and they will still give you the same resultant vector v. And uh, this tells us that they're not unique. Uh, let's think a little more, okay, along those lines uh, to this next question. So say you're given a vector r, right? This is some arbitrary vector r and you are told that uh, there are three vectors that result in this vector r1 r2 and r3 right so you have uh, three vectors right uh, now the question is are uh, and also, let's say you're given the unit vectors along each of these vectors, right? You have n1 hat, you have in this direction,